Hello, this is Mr. Craig, and today I'm going to talk very, very briefly about some history of chemistry and the simple uh, components of an atom. And I believe that most of this you've already had in general chem, so it should be a review for most of you. Um, this is not a history class, so one thing that I don't emphasize is that you memorize a bunch of scientists' names. Um, you may come across a chemistry teacher later on in your path that requires you to memorize all the history, and that's great and well and everything, but um, there's so much more chemistry that needs to be learned, and I'm not going to focus a lot on knowing the names and the characters involved in finding out all these things. So let's move on. Um, early history of chemistry. Before the 16th century, uh, the type of chemistry that was practiced was mainly alchemy. Uh, that was attempts to change cheap metals into gold. And we are capable, we do have the technology today to do that. However, the product is, it costs so much more to make the product than to put the resources into place to do it. So we, we can make gold if we want to. However, it's like 10 times more expensive to make it than it's worth. So it's more for a novelty than anything else. So we don't do it. Uh, and again, chemistry is a relatively young science, so to speak. Uh, it's been around for about three or four hundred years. Again, we still do not have technology where we can look at an individual atom. We can look at a group of atoms, uh, like looking at DNA, things like that, compounds. But we don't have the technology to look at an individual atom yet. So if somebody says, oh yeah, I saw this certain atom, um, they're lying to you. Around the 17th century, Robert Boyle, one of the first chemists to perform quantitative experiments, which we talked about yesterday, uh, that really started to get chemistry in motion there. And we'll talk a little bit more about what he did, not necessarily what he, uh, the history behind him, but some things that um, or learn from him. Conservation of mass, that's a law, which we talked about yesterday. And the conservation of mass states that mass is neither created nor destroyed. So in other words, it's simply just rearranged, just like energy, conservation of energy. Energy is not created or destroyed. We're working with what we've got, and things are just simply moved around. So even when we start doing some nuclear reactions, uh, we're not destroying things, we're just rearranging those things. But the mass itself, the mass component, is still intact. Um, some other, other fundamental chemical laws, law of definite proportion, which states that if I look at a carbon dioxide molecule here in Avon, it's going to be the same type of uh, molecule if I were standing on the surface of Mars. It would still be made up of one carbon and two oxygens. So law of definite proportions always says that there's a given uh, proportion of the element by mass within a compound. So there's, it's not going to change just because you're at a higher altitude, so to speak. And here's an example. I gave carbon touch chloride. There's always one atom of carbon for every four atoms of chlorine. And again, no matter where you're at, that'll still be true. Dalton's atomic theory. Uh, atoms of a given element are identical. So again, no matter where you're at, the atoms um, if I'm looking at a carbon atom here in Avon, it's going to be the same on the surface of Jupiter. So they're identical and they uh, are different in some fundamental way or ways. Uh, chemical compounds are formed when atoms combine with each other, and the given compound always has the same relative numbers and types of atoms. The, again, these are not something that should be mind-blowing for you. Uh, chemical reactions involve reorganization of atoms, changes in, way, in the ways that they are bonded together. Um, and again, remember the chemical reaction, we just simply have an exchange of electrons. The atoms themselves are still the same. Uh, the protons and neutrons don't change. Uh, we're just simply changing how the uh, arrangement of atoms are and the electrons get to change. However, if we look at a nuclear reaction, the atom that we start with is no longer the same. We do have sometimes different numbers of protons, different numbers of neutrons, and obviously some electrons can change. But chemical reactions, it's just a changing of electrons for the most part. 
An atom contains electrons, protons, and neutrons. And again, protons and neutrons are found within the nucleus, and they have relatively the same mass, where electrons are found outside of the nucleus, and they are very, very light in mass compared to a proton and neutron. Now, oftentimes when we talk about masses or calculating masses for an atom, we ignore the electron's mass. It's so small that we're going to ignore it. Doesn't mean that electrons do not have mass. Electrons do have mass. Photons of light have mass. They're just not very massive. Um, charges to be aware of, electrons are negative charge, protons are positively charged, and neutrons obviously are no charge. And we could look at the masses relatively, but we're, we're going to say that protons and neutrons are the same. They're not exactly the same, but they're very, very close. So when we do some calculations, which you'll have on the homework, and I'll give you some examples here in a moment, which you don't have a sheet for, so when you try these out, you can either do them mentally or write it down on a piece of paper and try it yourself by pausing the video. Uh, you'll notice here, however, that the mass of an electron is relatively small. I mean, times 10 to negative 31, where protons and neutrons are times 10 to negative 27. So that's a pretty substantial mass difference there. But again, do realize that they do have mass. Everything has mass as long as it's, it's matter. Okay. Um, when we talk about a chemist shorthand, now again, some students argue and say, well, this isn't the way that it's on the periodic table. I totally agree. If you look at four or five different periodic tables, they're arranged differently, but they have basically the same information. The thing that I want you to recognize is the mass number, which is on top in our, in our shorthand atomic symbol here. The mass is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Again, mass is protons plus neutrons. The atomic number is simply the number of protons. And obviously the element symbol is for representing the correct type of thing. Um, what is not given or discussed is, whoops, oh, I didn't mean to do that, is the charge on here. So if you look up here on the top right hand corner, this has no charge given at the moment, but if it did, okay, like potassium typically likes to have a plus one charge since it's in group 1a, we would see a plus one right there, which means that it has a different number of electrons than that which it originally started with. So if potassium has a plus one charge and it has 19 protons, how many electrons does potassium plus one have? Yeah, try to figure that out. If it has 19 protons or positive charges and the atom itself has a positive one charge, how many electrons or negatively, negatively charged particles do you have? Well, hopefully you said 18. In other words, it had 19 electrons when it's neutral. It lost one electron. Therefore, the positive charges outweigh the negative charges. So it would have a plus one charge. All right, well, let's take a look at some practice problems here. Um, here I have my periodic. Here's the symbol, and I want you to tell me what the atomic number is, the mass um, the atomic mass, the number of protons, number of neutrons, number of electrons, and the charge itself. And hopefully you recognize that there are some duplicate columns here. Uh, for example, if we look at atomic number here and number of protons, aren't those the same thing? You better believe it, they are. Um, so those two are, should have the same values. Now when we look at the atomic mass, the mass is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So if we know the number of protons, protons and neutrons, then we can find out what the atomic mass is. The number of electrons, depending on what the charge is, okay, depending on what charge we have, is going to tell us how many electrons we have. So in our first example, when I look at nickel plus two, and again, this 28 down here tells me how many protons I have, so I can go ahead and write down 28 protons. The atomic number is also 28. Uh, 60 is my mass number, which is my mass, so I can go ahead and put that. And don't forget that when we look at the mass here, um, the mass is the number of protons plus neutrons. So if I know I have a mass of 60 and I have 28 protons, how many neutrons do I have? Hopefully you would say 60 minus 28 is 32. All right, the charge, which is up here, tells me it's a plus 2 charge. 
So if I have a plus two charge, that means I have more protons than I do electrons. And we know that the number of protons determines exactly what we are looking at. So the number of protons will never change for a given element. However, the number of electrons can change because the charge will change. So if we know we have 28 protons and we have a plus two charge, how many total electrons do we have? Do we have 30 or 26? Hopefully you're going to say 26. What that means is I have 26 negative charges plus 28 positive charges gives me a plus two charge. Okay. All right, let's look at the next one. Here, I don't know what my symbol is, so I'm going to figure out what my symbol is. I know that it has a charge of zero. Here, I, ha I know it has 18 pro or I'm sorry, the atomic number is 18, which means it has 18 protons. My mass is 40. What we never, ever want to do is we never want to look at the mass to determine to determine what we have. We always want to look at the number of protons. So if we go to our periodic table, Okay, and we look for element number 18. Okay, and you can go ahead and get your periodic table out if you need to. Find element number 18. Well, element 18, oops, I thought I had that in review. So, element number 18 is right here, is argon. So, what we want to do is we want to come back over here, and it's not in review anymore, great. Okay, so I'm going to write down that I have argon. Sorry guys, my touch screen's a little touchy right now. <laughs> Sorry about that. That probably sounded really bad. That was me scooting the computer. So argon, I know it has a charge of zero. I know I have 18 uh, protons. So how many electrons do I have if I have a charge of zero and I have 18 protons? Well, if it's a charge of zero, I better have the same number of electrons as I do protons. All right, neutrons now. Well, my mass is 40. Okay, that's a 40. And my atomic number is 18. Okay. Actually, I probably should write with a ballpoint pen next time. Use a ballpoint pen. Okay, so we have argon. Oh, that looks so much better. Uh, 40 and 18. Now, if you want to write the charge up here as zero, that's fine. It's it's kind of understood that if it doesn't eraser would be nice. If it doesn't have a value there, then it is neutral. But it's up to you to determine or to decide if you want that there or not. So I have a 40 and an 18 here, argon. The last thing I need to do is find out how many neutrons I have. So 40 minus 18, hopefully is 22. Okay. Alright, try the next one on your own. Pause the video for a second and try to fill out the information that's in here. I mean, if you pause the video right now, it'll be set on that. Um, but give it a shot. Okay, now you've had a chance to try this out. Let's take a look at what we've got here. We've got an atomic mass of 20. We have, so we can put our 20 up top. And again, the atomic mass is not going to tell us what we have. We know that it has a charge of negative one. And again, these are very important clues here to help us decide what's going on. All right, so we need to know how many protons we have so that we can figure out what this thing is. Well, if I have a mass of 20 and 11 neutrons, the difference of those two are nine. So now I know that I have element number nine. Whatever element number nine is, looks like fluorine right here. Okay, so I come back. And am I still I'm not writing it? Boy, I've got to figure out a way to do this correctly. Okay, so I know that I have fluorine. Okay, so coming back to the number of electrons, I have one, a negative one charge on my electron. I know I have nine protons, so how many electrons should I have here? Do I have eight or ten? You're right, ten. In other words, I have more negative charges than I do positive charges. So I want to make sure that I have one more electron than I do proton. All right, go ahead and pause the video and try to figure out for the sodium here, plus one. All right, so you've had a chance. So obviously the charge is a plus one charge. Um, we have 11 protons. 
is our atomic number. Fill that in. The mass is 23. Difference of 23 and 11, I believe is 12 for our neutrons. So now, figuring out the number of electrons. Well, we have a plus one charge. We have 11 protons. So how many electrons do we have? Do we have 10 or 12? That's right, 10. Very good. So we have 11 positive charges, 10 negative charges, which gives us a plus one charge. All right, this last one here. We have 26 neutrons, 18 electrons, but we have a plus four charge. Is there any way we can figure out what our number of protons is based on, say, this amount of information? Absolutely. If we know we have a plus four charge and we have 18 electrons, then that means that we have four electrons missing from our neutral amount here. So we can have 22, which means I need to put a 22 down there, and my mass would be 22 plus 26, which is 48. And again, I don't really care about the 48 when determining what element I have because we're looking at a single element. And oftentimes, when I give you these things, the masses will not be the same. So I've got my element 22 right here. Okay. So that's titanium. And again, you'll notice that the mass on here is 47.90. Now, the 47.90 is the average of all the titanium atoms that exist in the universe or that we know about. We only care about this one that we're trying to get back to. Actually, let's go back. Hello. Sorry, guys. All right, so we know we're looking at titanium. I'm going to go back to review. Okay, so titanium, Ti, with a plus 4. Okay. All right, uh, I believe that's all I've got for you for this lecture today. Not as long. Uh, and again, hopefully this wasn't anything brand new for you. And if you need to, go back and take a look at anything that... Um, that I've talked about on these videos and that's the really nice thing about these videos you can always rewind and come back as always I hope this video has helped and if you have any questions don't hesitate to email me